February night on the Plains as the Auburn Tigers welcome in the top-ranked South Carolina Gamecocks to Auburn Arena for a Southeastern Conference showdown. Alongside the former North Georgia All-American Mimi Hill, I'm J.J. Jackson. South Carolina comes in the game riding a 28-game SEC win streak while the Auburn Tigers are looking for their first conference win of the season. Mimi, I think we're in for an absolute treat as the Auburn Tigers have been led all season long by the play of Unique Thompson. 100%. Unique Thompson is a double, double queen. She gets great positioning. She has great footwork. I mean, she's really able to clean up the glass well for Auburn, and she's a strong finisher at that. Exciting player to watch here tonight. Also for the Auburn Tigers, recently, Honesty Scott Grayson has stepped up her play, and that has meant great things for the Auburn Tigers with Honesty scoring from the outside. Yes, Honesty has blossomed over the last few games, and she's really become a go-to player. I'm not really surprised, but it's about time that Honesty has finally stepped up and been able to help out the Auburn Tigers. On the other side of things tonight, South Carolina has been led by the inside-outside combo of Zaya Cook and Aliyah Boston, two of the dynamic players in the SEC that will lead the way tonight for South Carolina. Yes, Zaya Cook and Aaliyah will be two really big key players for the South Carolina Gamecocks tonight. For Cook and Boston, they've really elevated their play this season. And you see there in conference play, both averaging just over 15 points per game. And you talk about inside-outside combinations, Mimi. A great guard along with an interior post player is good things for South Carolina. Like you said, it's a one-two punch with Zaya being able to evolve her scoring ability. And then you have Aaliyah who's been able to stretch out her game and also knock down a three. This is definitely two players to watch tonight. Auburn and South Carolina getting ready to tip things off here inside Auburn Arena. What a special game this should be. As we said, South Carolina riding a 28-game SEC win streak. And the Auburn Tigers, a difficult season for them so far this year, still looking for their first SEC game, but expecting big things for the Tigers. Taking a look inside, Romy Levy, Victoria Saxton will jump up, and we are underway with South Carolina controlling the opening tip. Destiny Henderson with the ball for the Gamecocks, who will swing this one around the wheel to Bree Beal. Trying to set things up for South Carolina's offense. One of the best in the SEC so far as you see the first offensive rebound of the game. And South Carolina will reset. First touch inside for Aaliyah Boston who backs her way in for two. And let me tell you, you cannot let Boston get position in the paint because she will produce down low. First two points of the game for Aaliyah Boston. And for the Auburn Tigers, Kia Patton, Romy Levy, Unique Thompson, Elena Rice, and honestly, Scott Grayson, your starting five. There's Scott Grayson to the cup, but just misses. Unique Thompson with an offensive rebound. She'll miss fire there as well, and South Carolina clears it and heads back the other way. Starting five for South Carolina, Cook, Henderson, Bree Beal, Aaliyah Boston, and Victoria Saxton as Honesty Scott Grayson picks up for Auburn and heads the other way. The lefty, Romy Levy, with a jumper. She'll miss fire on that one, and Destiny Henderson's off racing the other way. And in for two is Bree Beal. Kia Patton with her first touch of the game for Auburn, and Auburn's looking for some offense, trailing by four here early. Inside to Unique Thompson. She'll miss fire right there, and South Carolina heads back the other way. To the corner, Zaya Cook for three, and it's good. What a great possession for South Carolina, being able to get the ball up the floor quickly and, and getting a three-point shot off. 
Early 7-0 run here for South Carolina in the first quarter. A look there at the Charles Barkley statue outside of Auburn Arena where the South Carolina Gamecocks are visiting on the road here tonight on the Plains. For South Carolina, recently we saw a statue added to the outside of Colonial Life Arena honoring Asia Wilson, the former dominant player for the Gamecocks, Mimi, who was one of the best in the SEC. Absolutely, and it was only fitting that you give people their flowers while they're still here. So I know this is a very special moment for Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson, incredibly honored by South Carolina, giving her that statue outside of Colonial Life Arena. And for her to have the comments she did about her grandmother not even being able to walk on campus to see how far we've come. Now there's a statue of Asia outside the arena at South Carolina. How incredible is that? It's awesome. And for Asia Wilson being one of the best, now dominating the WNBA as well for the Las Vegas Aces. On the men's side of things, there were NBA players who were even talking about how great of an honor this was for Asia Wilson. And they shared their thoughts and comments on social media. Some of the NBA stars with comments about this decision by South Carolina. You see remarks there from John ja Morant and Jared Sullinger, Monte Morris for the Nuggets, and LeBron James even adding some comments there. And Mimi, a common trend there, calling her the GOAT. The GOAT. <laughs> it just shows you how much she means to players and people all over the world. Asia Wilson was one of the best for South Carolina, helped lead the way to the national championship and now doing big things in the WNBA. Back here inside Auburn Arena, South Carolina still has a good team this year. They're out in front early by seven as Auburn looks to get on the board for the first time. There's a jumper for Isha Koulibaly who's in the game for the first time and she'll miss fire. And South Carolina back quickly the other way. Left corner three, same spot for Zaya Cook and the same result. Auburn is gonna need to get back and find their players quickly uh, to take that three-point shot away. Credit to South Carolina for getting the rebound and pushing up tempo. There's a three ball for Auburn and the Tigers are on the board as Honesty Scott Grayson connects from deep. But Auburn can't locate Zaya Cook who once again her third triple just three minutes into the game. It's looking like it's going to be a three-point shootout tonight. Auburn's got to do a better job of finding Zaya Cook as they make their way down the floor. Tigers trying to set up some offense here. Koulibaly with a baseline jumper off the mark and the rebound and push for South Carolina. Back in the corner, it's Destiny Henderson this time before Auburn's able to get the defensive rebound and clear. South Carolina playing up-tempo early here, Mimi. Yes, and that was one thing that uh, Coach Staley touched on earlier. She said a good possession is being able to get the ball up the floor quickly and find the open player and get a quick and easy basket. And it looks like the quick and easy basket is coming from the three-point line tonight. So far, so good for the Gamecocks as we've seen uh, Zaya Cook who just picks up an assist right there. She's really improved over the last three games. Upped her score and she's already got nine tonight. Yes, and Coach talked about her being able to evolve uh, in her scoring ability and not just use her natural ability, but also putting her head down and embracing uh, getting to the basket. An offensive foul there called against the Auburn Tigers. Another turnover, and South Carolina will have the ball back. Destiny Henderson will bring this ball across court. South Carolina for the first time tonight will set up some offense. They've been playing so fast and executing off the fast break. Now they'll run a set. A touch inside for Boston working on Unique Thompson and she traveled. Got to get that feet work down, or excuse me, that foot work down. It could be tough when you're going against Unique. She's very physical. Here's Elena Rice with it for Auburn and 
A swing over to Unique Thompson. Romy Levy at the top of the wheel. And Kia Patton will run to the rim, have her shot blocked before Auburn finds Honesty Scott Grayson. Romy Levy handles the rebound there. And Unique Thompson. Unique Thompson can't quite connect, and that's going to be off of Auburn and over to South Carolina. As the Gamecocks are led by their head coach and Don Staley, who's one of the absolute best in all of women's college basketball. Led them to the 2017 National Championship and has a lot of success against Auburn, rightfully so, a member of the Naismith Hall of Fame back in 2013. She is truly a special coach. She's got a lot of good players, makes it a little bit easier, but you can definitely see the coaching there for Don Staley. <laughs> yes, and she is very passionate about her players. As we spoke and I asked her about what players had blossomed for her. I mean, she basically went through the whole roster. She couldn't just stop at one or two. Loves each and every one of her players, and you're right. She kept talking about all the contributions they've yes. gotten from everybody on this team. That's probably a good reason or a big reason why South Carolina is one of the best teams in the country. Yes, and she also touched on seeing growth from all of her players, and I think that's really special too. Number 22, Elena Rice to shoot two. Elena Rice will shoot two at the free throw line for Auburn. As Auburn... Only three points so far halfway through the first quarter. Really struggled on the offensive end. And Elena Rice is looking to pick up some points. Tigers just one for 11 to start today's game as Rice connects on the second free throw right there. Solid game last week versus Texas A&M for Elena Rice. Her best performance and we'll see if she's able to carry that over for Auburn here. Driving baseline around and out is Lily Grissett, and Auburn's off to the races. Before Elena Rice will pull it back out and try to set up some offense. Rice wants to shoot a three from the top of the key. It misses, and Boston will rebound and clear. Back the other way quickly. Grissett threw one that one away. I do appreciate the hustle for Honesty Scott Grayson there, being able to get back and knowing that they're looking to get the ball in the corner. That's the highest percentage three-point shot there is on the floor. And you've seen them knock it down three times already tonight. Grissett saw Zaya Cook open in the corner and wanted to get another three-pointer opportunity for Zaya Cook, but the errant pass turned the ball over and Auburn gets it back. Substitutions in here for Auburn as Kyra Lowry and Annie Hughes for the Tigers enter the game for the first time tonight. Along with Saniya Wells, who turns this one over. <laughs> Auburn led by their head coach and Terry Williams Flanoy, who's in her ninth season on the Plains. He's done a good job taking the Tigers to three different NCAA tournaments. It's been a difficult year for Coach Flo, a lot of roster turnover, but this team keeps competing each and every night. And that's what she talked about. She said, you know, this team is stayed, has stayed locked in, and even with, again, seven new transfers uh, that came in and then also just navigating with COVID, she says they're still motivated. There's a nice backdoor cut by Annie Hughes, who can't quite finish. And Nick Thompson can't connect on the follow as well but look at that i mean look at all of the newcomers that auburn's got to this year's roster so much turnover so much turnover but you know what so we'll see the finish here by zaya cook and and one look how she finds a way to get her eyes on the basket i mean that's special right there that's a special move we've seen her knock down three three pointers already she likes to score in groups of three as she gets the <laughs> old-fashioned three-point play right there. She sure does. Zaya Cook already 12 of the 20 so far for South Carolina. Such a strong start for Zaya. It's exactly what South Carolina needs, her getting them going. Tigers trying to set up some offense here. You see the quick hands defensively there from Zaya Cook. And Saniya Wells trying to set up some offense. She'll hand it over to Kyra Lowry, and that's a good drive and finish for Lowry. And South Carolina quickly back the other way. 
These Gamecocks don't stop. They do they not. Quickly. We see an offensive foul there. But then you have Annie Hughes there. Gets the right position. Takes it like a woman, too. I love that. <laughs> a tough play there for Annie Hughes. And Coach Flo, known for toughness. I mean, this Auburn team defensively very gritty. One of the top in the country in terms of steals. That's been a staple of her, her entire career coaching here at Auburn is the ability to steal. And we see it right there on cue as Good. Annie Hughes picks off the pass. Yes, Auburn's ability to read the pass, man, that's, that's great right there. They need to do more of that because obviously South Carolina is looking for that corner. Lowry misfires here and Destiny Henderson goes off the other way and off the glass for two. Auburn needs to pick up the ball sooner, slow them down so that they have time to get in their set. Skyra Lowry with it right wing. Gets a screen there from Koulibaly. Koulibaly's been a freshman for the Auburn Tigers, who've done a nice job her first year on the plane. All these young players for Auburn and the newcomers are having to get experience because the Auburn Tigers were so shorthanded throughout most of the year. Yeah, I mean, they have barely had enough practices where they've had the full team. That's tough to navigate. Due to injuries and due to the COVID-19 protocols across the Southeastern Conference, Auburn's had tough hills to climb up. But they sure do keep climbing. And credit to them. Plenty of opportunities to make excuses, I'm sure, but Coach Flo says that has not been what's happening at all in her practices. Not at all. You see the number of games that all these Auburn Tigers have missed so far this year. And again, night in, night out, they continue to compete. Got their hands full tonight as we're seeing the nation's top team in South Carolina off to an early and dominant start so far before a little careless turnover there from South Carolina, and Auburn will get it right back. What's something you've noticed so far from South Carolina, Mimi? Their ability to push the ball and score quickly, whether that's in the three-point, uh, excuse me, from the three-point line or getting the ball to the paint. It's been really impressive the pace that we've seen so far. There's a block shot, nice defensive play there from South Carolina. Romy Levy with it at the top of the key. And over to Elena Rice trying to set up some offense. The lefty layup there is blocked at the rim. We've seen two back-to-back -back nice defensive plays inside. Auburn's going to have to learn how to put that ball on the floor and stop for a jump shot. Look at that. She just anticipated that shot, blocked it, and she's unfazed. She's like, oh, yeah, I do this. I do this. <laughs> and back the other way she goes. That's Letitia Amir with a block for South Carolina on that end of the floor. set inside and there's a nice block from honesty scott grayson on the shot from amir honesty said i could do it too <laughs> she absolutely can look at her jump after this right with confidence too i love it amir right back though gotta keep the ball out the paint that was a great find by south carolina 24 to 6, our score here nearing the end of the first quarter. It's Romy Levy's got it, left wing. Three pointer there from the lefty. That's Off tough, the mark. That's a tough shot to take right there. Not really in good position. I've seen her knock that shot down, but without her being able to make that pass, I feel like that was just a rush shot. Zaya Cook with the runner at the end of the quarter. It's a quarter dominated by Zaya Cook for South Carolina. She finishes the quarter with 14. South Carolina in front by 20 after one. South Carolina off to a quick start in the first quarter, led by Zaya Cook, who's already got 14 points so far. Mimi, she's been excellent through one. She really has, and I, I like to compliment her on her ability to get to the basket, but look at this. Her feet get set, 
knocks down the three three times in the corner. I mean, they've, they've got to find her and find her quickly. Shooters love the corner, don't they, Mimi? They sure do. And then still, look, her ability to drive to the basket and connect for another three-point play. As South Carolina will get the ball to start things off in the second quarter. Looking to pick up right where they left off. Inside to Amir. Defended well by Unique Thompson. And that's a great play. So foul is called there on Weselick for South wow, Carolina. South Carolina number 32, Alyssa Weselick. That's her first in the team third. What kind of adjustments can Auburn make here offensively in the second quarter? Honestly, just putting the ball in the basket. When they put the ball in the basket, that gives them time to set up their defense. They really love that 2-2-1 press and dropping it back into a 2-3, but they've got to be able to score in order to get set up. And not scoring leads to fast breaks and outlets, as we're seeing right here as South Carolina will head back to the free throw line for two more. And they've been able to capitalize almost every possession. There's Lily Grissett going to the free throw line. The senior out of Durham, North Carolina. Averaging seven points a game on the year. And this is their lone senior. And so I know she's got a couple of starts over her four years, but my understanding from coach is that she still gives the same energy each practice and in each game. A good leader for the South Carolina team and a little surprising the success they've had given the fact they've only got the one senior on the team. Shows how talented the youngsters are on this Gamecocks team. Right. Mayer tries to throw the pass inside to Grissett before Auburn knocks it away. Good defensive play there from Unique Thompson on the interior. And Unique is always going to have her hands up, anticipating the pass, jumping to the ball, trying to get great position defensively. Unique Thompson, one of the top players in all of college basketball, certainly in the SEC. And we'll see there on the inbound play, Destiny Littleton knock it down from the outside. The set play on the inbound, and Littleton able to knock it down. There we see the defense of South Carolina with the steal. And back the other way they go into the corner to Breal before going inside to Amir, who's fouled. And Amir is one of those players uh, that Coach talks about. So we get another look inside to Amir before she's fouled. Leticia Amir you're saying Coach Staley had comments about Amir being one of their leaders. She sure did. Um, and she talked a lot about her being one of the players that she can see really a lot of growth in in the future. Uh, she has the highest ceiling of, of all of the players there. Um, and as we look at her in her freshman year, I mean, she's been able to, to elevate um, since then. Aaliyah Boston with the rebound off of the missed free throw. And South Carolina is going to get to set up some more offense. Back inside to Amir, who's fouled once again, and she'll get two more free throw attempts. Such a good pump fake. We've seen uh, consistently uh, Honesty uh, Scott Grayson uh, looking uh, to block uh, the shot. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and honestly, uh, uh, we've seen Unique doing the same. So that was a great uh, pump uh, fake, uh, being uh, able to get the defense off their feet and then leaning in to draw that foul. Almost stealing points there. Yeah. <laughs> Outsmarting your opponent. That's a good play and that's there. A, and that's what you got to do. Get to the free throw line and get you two free shots. Samir connects on the first one and misses on the second again. This time Auburn's able to get the rebound as Koulibaly grabs it, hands it to Elena Rice, and Auburn clears. Tigers trying to set up some offense here. They're going to need to get Unique involved, get her as many touches as possible to get her going. Once she gets going, everybody kind of falls in line. Honesty, Scott Grayson to the cup as she'll miss fire. Tigers continuing to struggle on the offensive end. And quickly back the other way. Amir misses inside. She'd like to have that one back. And that was one maybe she didn't need the pump fake right there. I think based off of just the movement of catching it on the run, she should have just went straight up with that shot. 
quickly the other way. Littleton's got it in the corner inside there to Aaliyah Boston and wide open, easy jumper there. Leaving her wide open at that mid-range shot. She's going she's gonna to shoot it and knock it down. Here's a look at Elena Rice trying to set up some offense for the Tigers. Auburn, two of 23 from the floor to start the game. Really struggling to knock down shots right now. Unique Thompson short on the jumper. South Carolina is going back the other way. There's a nice scoop layup, a little Euro step there from Henderson. Very nice. Her ability to go coast to coast and finish with a nice little behind uh, layup. It's impressive. Tigers trying to set up some offense here inside. They go to Unique Thompson. Honestly, Scott Grayson, the pump fake and a jab. Corner to Patton, who misfires on the outside shot. And Amir grabs the rebound, takes it back the other way herself. for a takeaway inside. I mean, we talk about tempo for South Carolina, Mimi. Even their big players, their post players, will grab the rebounds and go. They, no thought about an outlet pass. They want to do the dribbling themselves. Right. And, and, and hey, if you can do it, do it. <laughs> I mean, it just speeds up the game. You slow it down by making that extra pass. So if you can handle the ball, take it down the floor, and still make smart passes, I say, why not? Post players can dribble the ball, right. too. We're seeing how talented the South Carolina team is. Auburn's trying to push tempo a little bit themselves. And now they'll get back and try to set up some offense. They've been unable to do that so far, misfiring on their shots. We talk about this Auburn team all season long has been able to have their defense set up their offense. But there's a good lefty layup from Elena Rice to put the Tigers back on the scoreboard and end their scoring drought. Auburn once a time as South Carolina all over Auburn early in the second. I hope that um, people of all races can, can really understand what black people bring to the table. We're funny. We're smart, um, we're fearless, we're hopeful, we have the toughest of skin, we're pivoters, we're conquerors. Let's keep shining, ladies. Let's keep being that beacon of hope because somebody's watching, somebody's listening, somebody's learning, and then our legacies will continue through other people. Starts at the top there with South Carolina head coach Don Staley and the sorority of coaches that we've got in the SEC. You'll hear more of that coming up at halftime as we're back inside Auburn Arena between the Tigers and the Gamecocks. And Don Staley's bunch has looked excellent so far in this one. You see all the black women head coaches in the SEC. And a really good round table conversation with Maria Taylor coming up at the break. Auburn able to knock down a shot from the outside at Romy Levy, but then we see South Carolina able to respond themselves right away as Anaya Russell's left open in the corner, and she'll knock down the shot from the outside. Already 40 points total for South Carolina, and a takeaway and steal there before Sanaya Wells commits the foul. That's a frustration foul right there, maybe. I would agree. And hopefully we can be able to limit those as they begin to get into their offense, get into a flow of things, and start just taking better shots. Sometimes Auburn's shot selection isn't the best, especially when they're forced to shoot threes. Um, so they need to really get some great ball movement and find good open shots. So there's a quick turnover. Out of bounds, that goes. Then Annie Hughes checks into the game for the Auburn Tigers.
Only four turnovers so far for Auburn. We talk about ways that they can improve, and, and really they've done a good job of taking care of the basketball against South Carolina. Auburn's just struggling to knock shots down. Right, and that's what we need to do, or that's what Auburn needs to do in order to, again, close this scoring gap. Romy Levy's already got one three-point make, and there's another. She's able to knock it down from the corner. Zaya Cook with the ball at the top of the wheel for South Carolina. She'll swing it across court to Beal. Gamecocks trying to set up some offense. Cook from the outside. She misfires on that one, and Newton Thompson's able to grab the rebound there. Auburn looking to push. Unique Thompson falling away, and she can't connect on that shot. Auburn does not need to rush shots. Try to get some more ball movement, get a few reversals, make South Carolina play defense for at least 15 to 20 seconds to kind of tire them down a little bit, and that way hopefully they can get a better shot selection. And for the Auburn Tigers, Mimi, led by Unique Thompson, she's still scoreless in this one. And they've got to get the ball to her. She's got to get good shots, start making some baskets so that she can get going and get the rest of the team going with her. See if Auburn can do that right here as the Tigers head back down the court. Kyra Lowry looking to push. Amy Hughes can't connect on this jumper and back the other way and transition the Gamecocks go. That's a great defensive play there from Reese for Auburn. For but not able to fully grab the steal and South Carolina is able to lay it in. Let's see if Auburn can get some ball reversals here to get South Carolina a little more tired and get them to slack off just a little bit on the defense. You need Thompson, can't knock that one down. And South Carolina is able to grab the rebound and head the other way before a foul is called right there. That's a shot you typically see Unique Thompson make on the other end. She just can't buy a bucket. Yeah, she just hasn't been able to find that, that soft touch quite yet. So South Carolina will head back to the free throw line. This Gamecocks team is as good as advertised. Coming up next, after our women's basketball doubleheader, the SEC Now team will have a complete breakdown of tonight's game, as well as interviews with coaches and players, 11 Eastern, 10 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Kia Patton inside to Unique Thompson, who's looking for her first points of the game, and there they are, the spin move, a go-to for Unique Thompson, and she's on the scoreboard. It is, and again, that's exactly what Auburn needs. Get Unique going, and I think everyone else will follow in suit. We'll see if Auburn can string together a couple of stops after getting the bucket offensively. There's one right there, and Kia Patton looks to push, heading back the other way. Levy was looking for Thompson on the inside, but Unique Thompson's going to be called for the offensive foul. 20, Unique Thompson. That's her second. It can get physical down there in the post sometimes. I think Unique Thompson was probably excited about that first bucket she oh, just yeah. got. She wanted the ball back. <laughs> <laughs> wanted it back. A little bit too aggressive right there. She's whistled for the foul. Here we see a little full court pressure from Auburn, what the Tigers are known for, and we'll see if they can get some stops out of it. Yeah, they've actually switched to a 1-2-2 two, two versus that 2-2-1 two, two, that they were running to give South Carolina a different look. Is South Carolina trying to set up some offense. Aaliyah Boston on the inside and able to score. It's been the first half that's been led by Zaya Cook for South Carolina. And Auburn's offense not able to knock too many shots down. 
Headed back the other way. Saxton for two with the layup for the Gamecocks. It's great ability for her to read that pass and pick it off and finish at the other side of the floor. She found her passing lane, able to get the steal and heading back the other way. Auburn, look at the score here before the break. There's a bucket from Kia Patton. And that'll take us to halftime. And South Carolina all over Auburn right now. 47 to 18 is our score at the break. And this one is Zaya Cook. Almost outscoring Auburn herself, Mimi. Right, and she has stepped up, and it is showing tonight her ability to, again, just get open, hit the open three, get to the basket, draw a foul, get an and one. It's impressive. South Carolina in front over Auburn at the break. South Carolina all over Auburn, 47 to 18 is our score. JJ Jackson and Mimi Hill with you on the SEC Network. Mimi, what's your biggest first half takeaway after watching this one? One, that Zaya Cook is a walking bucket. Two, that South Carolina has been great in transition, getting the ball out hitting the three-point line, getting in the paint. Auburn has been struggling to knock down baskets, but I really believe if they start pushing the ball and getting the ball in the paint, then they'll be able to close this gap. Work their way from inside to out with the buckets there for Auburn. And it's been a good first half for South Carolina offensively, led by Zaya Cook. What's made Zaya Cook so effective? Her ability to knock down shots. <laughs> I mean, she's able to get her feet set, knock down those corner shots. She attacks the basket and connects with the basket. Had had and ones, and then had even a nice behind the back uh, drive where she also connected. As we're taking a look at some of these first half highlights, there's the behind the back from Zaya Cook and off the glass for one. We've seen a good number of great defensive plays for South Carolina as well. And Great defense, but also Auburn, as we see right there, Mimi has missed a couple of easy looks. They have, but again, that, that pass inside to Unique and, and this drive by Rice is exactly what they need to do. Getting some shots inside the paint. That's the highest percentage shot there. Auburn and South Carolina halfway through this one. Zion Cook, one point better than her average on the season, and we've only played the first half in tonight's game. You caught her a walking bucket, and the numbers certainly do prove that, Mimi. Yes, and I'm, I'm expecting to see her continue to be that walking bucket in the second half if Coach keeps her on the floor. First time this season that South Carolina was able to outscore an SEC opponent by 20-plus points. We mentioned our players to watch in this one. Zaya Cook, obviously, for South Carolina. Unique Thompson was that player to watch for Auburn and only two points in the first half. She's got to step her game up in order for Auburn to be more competitive in the second half, I would think. Coach Staley talked about giving Unique different looks in order to kind of disrupt her, and I think she's been able to do that. So Unique just has to regain her focus and really continue to play hard and get good position and make the appropriate moves, read the defense, and again, just attack the basket. Do not stop attacking the basket. As there's a look at some of the Star Watch players there. Aaliyah Boston on the interior. She's had a good day so far, hasn't missed a shot yet. Seven rebounds as well. Her job's been pretty easy on the inside for South Carolina. She's been able to consistently hit down that jumper. Auburn, I know they're in a 1-2-2 or a 2-3, two, two, but protecting the paint is very important, especially, again, if they can hit down that 15-foot jumper. South Carolina with a win tonight over the Auburn Tigers would be their 29th straight SEC win, 22 in a row on the road. And Staley would have her 148th regular season SEC win. That would tie the most among active SEC coaches with Texas A&M's Gary Blair, who's also in action tonight. So we'll continue to follow that one right there. But, I mean, what South Carolina can do with a win tonight is pretty impressive. Yes, and when you think about what they've been able to do on the season, already 9-0 in the SEC and being able to navigate so well in COVID. I know Coach Daly touched on a team that can pivot when needed is a team that can stand strong and win championships in the future, whether that be an SEC or national championship. Which they're, they've they been able to do both in, yes. in, in recent years is when both the SEC consistently 
And then also, as we said, in 2017, the South Carolina team beat Mississippi State, another SEC team, in the national championship game. And the Gamecocks could be well on their way to another deep run in March. Let's watch some second half basketball, shall we, as the Tigers get the ball first to start the second half. And as you can see already, South Carolina is giving Auburn a different look defensively. And that's just a careless turnover right there as Elena Rice stepped on the end line trying to drive baseline right there. you got to know where you're at on the floor, Mimi. You do. Auburn has to limit their turnovers so that South Carolina cannot have as many opportunities to get set up and run their offense. Tangers only had six turnovers in the first half of this one and one turnover on their first possession of the second half. I was always told that any uh, uh, turnovers under 12 was a good game. It was a good game. Any more than that, you've given the other team too many opportunities. For the most part, South Carolina all year long has done a good job of limiting turnovers and probably one of the reasons that they've been able to be so dominant. <laughs> Absolutely. Auburn looking for their first bucket of the second half. As we're a minute into the third quarter. Romy Levy's knocked down a couple of three-pointers for the Tigers. And here's an open look on the baseline for Honesty Stott Grayson. Grayson. That's a make from deep. Just inside the three-point line. I was hoping that could have been a three for Auburn. Looked like they did give her three points on that they one. did. Was able to get her foot right behind that right line. Right behind the line. Gamecox going back inside. We're passing back out. Saxton out to Zaya Cook. Misses on the triple there. Cook knocked down her first three pointers. First three of those. She has the green the light. Half. That's not a bad shot for her. I mean, again, she's already knocked down three. I'm okay with her shooting that shot. Romy Levy's already knocked down two and make it three as Levy, the lefty, a freshman for the Tigers from Israel, knocks down her third three-pointer of the game. I really enjoyed watching Romy play. I think she's just going to continue to be good for Auburn in the upcoming years. She's got a good-looking jump shot, something about those lefties. Right, and they're so hard to defend because everyone is so used to guarding right-handed people, so they're always closing out to the right hand. Makes it a whole lot easier for Romy Levy and lefties everywhere to knock down shots from the outside. Here's some transition for Auburn, but Patton unable to make the layup, and South Carolina will push back the other way. Henderson on the inside. Beal with a great pass to Saxton, who's fouled on her way up. Six points early in the second half for the Auburn Tigers, both from behind the three-point line. South Carolina might need to change up their defense because Auburn is now starting to knock down more threes in this second half. A lot of good drives and kicks yes. from Auburn to set yes. those up. Yes, and the inside-outside pass is the best pass when looking to get a three-point shot. Saxton at the line for two. She'll knock down the first one. Victoria Saxton, the junior out of Rome, Georgia. Coach calls her the unsung hero. Says she's very low maintenance, but also high performing. I love that. She's got six points tonight's game. And Coach Staley highlighted her as being a high performing player. All of these players for South Carolina have performed well all season long. All of them. All of them. She said that she's seen growth in all of her players, and I think that's really special. You could tell that Coach was really excited to have a chance to really talk positively and uplifting about her players. Just one blemish on the season so far for South Carolina. It was a non-conference loss to NC State, but this team is just so talented. They're able to bounce back from those losses, and it's a young team. We mentioned just one senior on the South Carolina team, but the roster is loaded with high-profile recruits yes. and uh, the development there for Coach Staley once they arrive on campus as we get a look at the loaded recruiting class South Carolina's had over the years. And I think they're just going to continue to be successful. Like you said, they're young, and so to have a lot of these players coming back, especially with just having their one lone senior, South Carolina's only up and up continuously. 
Coach Staley's done a great job building this program. And we see the players we've highlighted, and Aaliyah uh, Boston and Zion uh, Cook, both top five players in their classes. And anytime you could get top five, top ten players on your roster, good things are going to happen, and that's certainly been the case for South Carolina. Honestly, Scott Grayson is you too. See there, South Carolina, the number one recruiting class in 2021, and four players in the top 15. So good things will continue for the Gamecocks in years to come. We see honestly Scott Grayson at the free throw line for the Tigers here. Offensively, Auburn's been off to a much better start here in the third quarter compared to the first two. I think Coach Flo got into that locker room and told them that, hey, you've got to come out and still compete hard for the next 20 minutes. And they came out ready to play. It's got to be a level of pride involved in this as well. And understanding you are the younger team, you do have a lot of roster turnover. This is one of the top teams in the country, but still to compete. Yeah, you got to come out ready. And Auburn didn't do that, but they came out ready in the second half. And so, again, they've been able to show that they're not just going to lay down and take it. That's certainly not the case. Is Sanaya Wells able to knock it down from deep, and there's a turnover. We'll see if Auburn can put together some buckets on this end. As this Auburn team had a lot of turnover from this past year, and Don Staley even tweeted about it back in March, saying that she has been in Coach Flo's shoes. We mentioned earlier the number of players that left Auburn's team from last year and all of the newcomers on this year's team. Coach Staley knows exactly what Coach Flo has been through. They're the best of friends off the court as well, and so that's a shoulder to lean on in the coaching industry. Yes, and, and Coach Flo definitely did lean on Coach Daly, and Coach Daly said, you know, sometimes you have to lose some to gain. And even though Auburn still has a very young team and it's going to take some time to really adjust, Coach Daly said she's worried about playing them two times <laughs> next season because she sees the potential that this Auburn team has. And that's high praise for Auburn, the talent that they've got for Coach Staley, as you said, to be worried about what's to come right. in the next couple of years with this Auburn team. And this could be valuable experience for Auburn as they get ready for next year and the, and the years to come after that. So there's a bucket from Aaliyah Boston on the inside. Morgan Robinson Wagyu with it up for the Tigers, and Auburn will look to set up some offense. And as you can see, South Carolina has switched their defense again because Auburn has now become a three-point threat. What have they been doing to stop the three-point shot for Auburn? Well, now it's manning up, making them put the ball on the floor. And Auburn has struggled to really get to the basket and capitalize, and that's why they switched to making them shoot the three by going into 2-3. But again, they've knocked down two now, and so they've got to switch it back to the man-to-man -to -man defense. There's a steal right there from Saxton, and she missed it on the other end. There's the rebound from Romy Levy, and that, that's a layup that Saxton wants back, I'm sure. Absolutely, and I think that because she slowed up, it kind of took her out of rhythm. That, you have to go full speed. Continuous motion into the layup. Back quickly the other way is Beal. That one knocked out of play. As South Carolina is in front in the third quarter, Aaliyah Boston with some buckets down the stretch for South Carolina. Here we go to the top now. Top now. That we never ever stop now. Here we go to the top now. Aaliyah Boston has been one of the stories for South Carolina all season long and certainly been the story tonight as well. One of the best players in the country last year's ESPN Freshman of the Year. And Aaliyah Boston can just score at all levels. She really can, and from the inside and the outside, which I think is special when a post player can step out and shoot the three. That's an elevation of the game there. Some coaches don't like it when their post players step outside and shoot, but it appears from watching South Carolina this season, watching a little bit tonight, Don Staley's given Boston that green light. 
And it's nice to be able to have a different look. If a player can knock down the three and, and then that cause a big man who's traditionally slower uh, on the defensive end, end, then she can then put the ball on the floor uh, and drive it in. So it gives the post different looks. And I think that, again, just elevates the game um, offensively for a team that allows their player to shoot the three. Celia Boston, 10 points and eight rebounds on her way to yet another double-double likely. And this one, Unique Thompson was fouled on this one and the refs will head to the monitor to get another look at this. Unique Thompson has been slow scoring to start in this one. Boston's defending on the interior. What do you see here, Mimi? I honestly saw good defense. I think that because Aaliyah's hands kind of came down right here, they come down just a little bit, it's a foul. You've got to be straight up. Hands got to be straight up. So Unique Thompson will head to the free throw line for a pair. Not able to connect on the first one. In the first half, you were mentioning for Unique Thompson how much easier it could be once you see the bucket, the ball go into the bucket to then open up your scoring. Yes, it, it, it really helps because, again, it's going to cause South Carolina to change their defense once again people start scoring, when Auburn starts scoring inside the paint. Inside to Boston, he passes it further underneath. Offensive rebounds for South Carolina. They're currently fourth in the country in offensive rebounds per game. We've seen plenty of them tonight, and creating second chances is big time. Yes, and Auburn has to be able to limit that box out, put a body on someone, and limit those second and third opportunities because you give them too many, they're eventually going to capitalize on it. Uh, Lena Rice. Rice with the bucket. And very quickly, South Carolina goes back the other way. I mean, Destiny Henderson was a blur back down the court. Great job by Auburn to get back defensively, though, because South Carolina's had to set things up. Boston on the inside for two. I love that post move. Two dribbles to the middle, give him a little fake, come back to the right-hand side, knock it down. Love it. It's textbook right there. Good play there from Aaliyah Boston with Isha Koulibaly defending. Here's Kia Patton with the drive and a bucket there for the Tigers. Patton, the junior out of Indianapolis, was a Junior College All-American, it's her first season here playing for Auburn. Started several games for the Tigers. You see some defensive pressure from Auburn. We'll get another look at Aaliyah Boston. And pay attention to how good position she gets here. Yeah, two dribbles to the middle, make you think you're going to the middle, come back. She put that elbow out to kind of create that distance. Finished with the right hand. Pump fake. Connected. A good play on the inside for Aaliyah Boston. And there's another short jumper for her inside the paint. And she continues scoring. Right. That's, that's been her sweet spot all night, that little 15-foot jumper. Points in the paint is always a stat that coaches look at. And that stat's a pleasant one for Don Staley because Aaliyah Boston's always scoring on the inside. Most of South Carolina's shots do come from the inside. They don't really shoot the three a lot. We've seen it differently tonight. They've shot a lot of threes, um, which was, has been great for them because they've been able to knock down it consistently. But again, Auburn's got to stop that, stop the passes in the paint. Got to keep it out. And right there, we see Aaliyah Boston called for her third foul. And Auburn's having a tough time stopping Aaliyah Boston. It might be. Aaliyah Boston's the only person that could stop herself if she stays in foul trouble. Right, she's going to have to play smart for this last minute and a half and then also in the fourth quarter. Under two minutes to play here in the third quarter with South Carolina still in control of this one. Auburn has looked much more comfortable offensively, though, in the third quarter here. They really have. 
And I think that's because they started scoring early. And when you start to score, everyone, their confidence just raises. And as you can see with the drive by Koulibaly, it's because everyone else has started to connect and started to get and take good shots. Auburn's definitely playing more confident. And what a good drive that was by Koulibaly going to her left. As we see Zaya Cook misfire for South Carolina. That's been a defensive adjustment that Auburn has made is kind of limiting the scoring of Zaya Cook, who was all over the first half. And there's Koulibaly drawing the charge. And I believe Coach Flo said in that locker room, we've got to find Cook. We've got to make her put the ball on the floor. I mean, she's great with the ball on the floor, but I'd rather take a two-point basket over a three-point basket. Under 30 seconds left to play here in the third quarter as Auburn looks to add the scoring here. Misfire there in South Carolina back off running the other way. Number 24, leading Grissette for two. Grissette gets on the scoreboard right there. I love how quick Henderson is. I mean, she gets the ball and she goes. Everybody else has got to be able to keep up. And there's a three at the buzzer for Elena Rice at the end of the third quarter. Tigers had 18 points at the break. They scored 21 there in the third quarter off the three-pointer from Elena Rice. Fourth quarter is coming up next. Auburn won the third quarter but they could not stop Aaliyah Boston on the inside. Aaliyah already has 14 points and eight rebounds. She's been able to consistently knock down that 15-foot jumper. Auburn's gonna have to really put a body on her and limit her touches. It's the defensive adjustments that Auburn can make is, we said there at the end of the third quarter, Auburn just had 18 points at halftime. They scored 21 in the third quarter, so they were scoring much more effectively. And that's something to look to continue here in the fourth quarter, Mimi. They definitely came out ready to compete. And I'm glad to see that they didn't lay down because that's important. You gotta give, you gotta keep going. Hey, it's not over until it's over. Right. It's Victoria Saxton with the th old fashioned three point play right there to open up scoring in the fourth quarter. Kia Patton with it on the left wing. Mid-range jumper for Patton is off the mark, and Honesty Scott Grayson gets the offensive rebound. And will finish Honesty that one on the Scott inside. Grayson. Good take by Honesty. I love the fact that Albert just kept playing right there. There's the offensive rebound by Victoria Saxton. She's fouled on the inside. So South Carolina will get to inbound underneath. Auburn, Talk about those Kulibaly. offensive rebounds for South Carolina. They're so good at that. They really are. They get great position. And that's that's tough to do in the SEC. It's continuously be good offensive rebounders. South Carolina looks to Henderson on the baseline. And this team is well put together and Appears to be about to make a big run deep in SEC play. And, and, and big picture wise for the South Carolina team, they've got their eyes set on a big goal and that, that's winning a championship. And it comes down to where you're seated in the NCAA tournament. Right now, they're slotted to be a one seat, which is certainly a good thing. What I love about a comment from Coach Staley, she was like, we only pay attention to the game that's in front of us. We don't look too far ahead. We know what our end goal is, but it's also important to, to stay present and not looking too far ahead because each game, it could be anybody's night. That's Charlie Green's job to look ahead for these teams. He's got the Gamecocks as the number one overall seed right now. Kind of puts a target on your back if you're in that position, but Don Staley's staff is no stranger to that. And the South Carolina team is talented enough, Mimi, I believe, to really compete for a national championship this season. Number 11, Destiny Lewis. I couldn't agree with you more, JJ. They really are. And as you can see, 
with the numbers they're putting up tonight. It's, it's possible. Such even scoring from the South Carolina team. Everybody can score. And they've been able to switch defenses. They're versatile on the defensive end. And it's a really, really talented South Carolina team who's looking to win another SEC regular season championship, another SEC tournament championship. This team's on their way to their 29th consecutive SEC win. How impressive is that? That's really impressive. I mean, the SEC is one of the toughest conf uh, conferences, if not the toughest. And again, to be able to do that in the midst of a pandemic, that's really special. Not everybody can do it, but South Carolina is doing it and making it almost look easy. Which makes you feel so confident about their chances in the NCAA tournament because this SEC team is loaded with top 25 teams. And South Carolina has been running through the whole conference so far. Right, without a problem. <laughs> As we take a look at some of the longest SEC win streaks, a win tonight will tie South Carolina with the Tennessee Lady Volunteers. Pat Summit was known to have long SEC win streaks in her coaching career. And Dawn Staley's doing the exact same thing, Mimi. She is. She is definitely um, making her way and leaving a, a great legacy for herself here at South Carolina. South Carolina will go to the free throw line right here. This game is in command for Dawn Staley, who looks relaxed there on the sideline and pleased with her team's performance so far. South Carolina plays tonight's game, and they've got a big one around the corner as well. As a top five team in UConn as due up next for South Carolina. That's going to be a big test for them. And that's going to be a fun game to watch. As just a basketball fan, yes. those are the games that you love to just sit down and watch. Right. We got Gino and Don. I mean, two legends competing against each other. Coming up on Monday, two of the top coaches, as you mentioned, Gino R. E. Metz, UConn and Don Staley here at South Carolina. And who knows? That could be a preview of that could be a preview of a, a, a game to come later in the NCAA tournament. UConn Honestly, has Scott had Bruce South Carolina's Bruce. number. However, South Carolina won the most recent matchup in this one. And we mentioned those consecutive road wins. That's going to be put to the test coming up on Monday. Look at that. South Carolina back in February of 2020 was able to pick up their first win versus UConn in program history. And they had four players in double figures. That's big, and that's exactly what you need in order to beat a team like UConn. Got to have more than just two or three players in double figures. And then just for South Carolina to be able to get past a team like UConn. And, and, and we talk about confidence a lot in sports, Mimi. I, I feel like once they've been able, a lot of these players were on last year's team that knocked off UConn. They, they know what it takes to beat the Huskies. Right. right, and they just continue to build off of that. I think Coach Staley does a great job building confidence within each player from start to finish. I mean, she just does a really good job with that. Honestly, Scott Grayson has been nearly automatic from the free throw line. She knocks down that one right there. And what a bright spot for Auburn. Honesty has been who sat out all of last season after transferring to the Plains from Baylor. It took her a little while to get going, but coach mentioned that out of all the players, Honesty Scott Grayson has been the one to really blossom. She's doing everything, not only offensively, but look at her drawing a charge right here. I mean, I mean, again, I love when people just take it. You know, some people <laughs> fall and they're a little soft with it, but I love when they just take it. That's exactly what Honesty did. Take the did. charge. So tough. Here's Romy Levy from the outside. She'll miss fire on that one. South Carolina looks to run the other way. Russell with it. She's already knocked down a three-pointer in tonight's game. And there's a bad pass right there as Levy will steal, and Auburn looks to start the break with honesty Scott Grayson misfiring on that three-point attempt. Not the best shot that she could have got out of that possession. You really didn't have any rebounders down low uh, to, to potentially 
rebound, that missed shot. Got to get some ball rotation in there. And there's, a, there's another charge right there as Auburn, a tough team. But South Carolina in control of this one in the fourth quarter. South Carolina leading 75-48 over Auburn in the fourth quarter here as we take a look at some scores from around the SEC. A couple of top 25 teams in action right now. Kentucky trailing by five right now against Ole Miss. That's a good game right there. As we take a look at the SEC team standings, we mentioned how impressive South Carolina's run was. And you look at the standings right there, you see all the rankings for all the teams at the top of the conference, and South Carolina, for the most part, has been running through all of them. They, ha they have, and they, they deserve it. They've been putting in the work. They've been playing with confidence. They've been just outright being successful. <laughs> South Carolina yet to lose so far in SEC play, and they're on their way to their 10th SEC win of the season. And for Coach Terry Williams, Lenoy and the Auburn Tigers, they're still looking for their first SEC win of the year. Their hands were full tonight with this one going against a team like South Carolina. see Olivia Thompson into the game for the first time tonight for South Carolina, number zero for the Gamecocks. Headed back the other way, Sanaya Wells into the corner for Annie Hughes. And it's a three-pointer at the top of the key for Sanaya Wells. She's able to connect. Auburn has looked more composed offensively in the second half. They have, and they've really started to get more people involved. The more touches you can get from each offensive player. It just really helps everybody get a flow. Everybody needs to touch the ball. There's a rebound inside for Weselick for South Carolina before is able to take it away. And Auburn will head back the other way. Kyra Rowley, Lowry trying to set up some offense for Auburn. Inside to Unique Thompson for a pair. She was able to get a good position there, and Hughes was able to get it right over the defense. That was a really great look. Help side was a little late from South Carolina. We talked with Coach Staley before tonight's game, Mimi, and she mentioned, got to give Unique Thompson different looks. And, and for Thompson tonight, just seven points and eight rebounds, well below her averages. South Carolina has done a really good job of containing Unique Thompson. They really have. Coach, Coach Daly said, hey, she's a matchup nightmare. If we don't give her different looks, she's going to have a field day. And so because of the different looks they've given her, she's been able, they've been able to limit her points in the paint. It's Thompson with the spin move there inside, plus the foul. Here's a free throw coming. She loves that spin move. She really does. Look here, she gets great position. Hughes passes it right over the top. I mean, you can't stop that. Ball on the floor, reverse, over two. The girl's impressive. Plus the foul. She, <laughs> right. she Old-fashioned three-point play. Yeah, she really is a matchup nightmare. Once you get Unique going, it's hard to get her. It's hard to stop her. With that bucket right there, Thompson able to get into double figures in tonight's game. South Carolina letting some of the reserves on their team get some action here late in the fourth quarter. As Auburn's whistled for a foul here on the foul, inside. Uh, Auburn number five, Aisha Koulibaly. That's her third. Aisha Koulibaly has whistled for her third foul. Impressive shooting tonight from South Carolina from the outside. And Auburn's done a much better job in the second half defensively as well. We mentioned the improvements they've had offensively too. Right, and that was such a smart slow up, a change of pace for Sanaya Wells because it, it caused South Carolina to kind of become a little stagnant, and that's how she was able to get the ball inside the Koulibaly. It's been a much better second half for Auburn. It's got to be a positive for Coach Terry Williams-Flinoy. You look at the record, it's 
a matter of trying to find as many positives for Auburn and, and the effort that we've seen from the Tigers tonight is going to be one of those positive takeaways I'd imagine for Coach Flo. I would agree, especially knowing that they have lacked consistency with having all players in practice, having all players being able to, to play, and yet they still come out and compete. We, they might have started a little, little slow, but again, they still came out in the second half and said, hey, we're not going to lie down. As Auburn has continued to battle, continued to compete in the game. Tigers currently on a 15-2 run, and they'll look to extend that run right here with Saniah Wells going to the free throw line for a pair. Basketball is a game of runs. It is nice to see Auburn getting some of those in here in the second half. And against a good team like South Carolina, these runs are hard to come by against some of the best teams in the country. They've been able to do that tonight against South Carolina in the second half. Sonari Wells unable to make either of those free throws, so it will remain a 15-2 run for Auburn. And with just over a minute to play, South Carolina looks to add to the scoreboard. And there's a traveling violation called against the Gamecocks. I like that she was aggressive with the drive there. Just got to get that, foot, that footwork down. Kulabali at the top of the wheel for Auburn, and we'll see what the Tigers can do here at the end of the game. I mean, that's got to be one of your takeaways, and this one has just been Auburn's ability to compete in the second half. Yes, definitely. They came out ready to play. They almost were playing like the score was 0-0. Zero to zero. They came out, they attacked, they started to knock down three-point shots. I think that's going to be important for them as they prepare for the rest of the season because they have some tough matchups here in the future. South Carolina will dribble this one out. Just about a second difference between the shot and game clock in this one. And what a good performance it was from Don Staley's group to pick up a non-conference, or excuse me, a conference win in the SEC against the Auburn Tigers. Zaya Cook and Aaliyah Boston were the highlight players for South Carolina, and they were as good as advertised tonight in the game for the Gamecocks. And our game's gone final, and South Carolina has won this one, 77 to 58. Gamecocks with their 29th straight SEC win. And South Carolina will improve to 10-0 in SEC play on the year.